Okay, Mike here. This is just a final impressions review of the OwlCam LTE version 5. This is basically the latest version that they have as of 2022. Now, I believe the hardware, it says it's OwlCam version 5 is a classic version, but, um, you know, I, I don't know of any a newer version, so it's basically very similar to the previous versions of Owl Cams, as far as I can tell, but with updated software and probably some improvements that aren't worthwhile for them to show you why uh, you want an Owl Cam vibe. Anyway, so the, the quick gist of it is that it is a dash cam that records the front of the car, basically facing out the windshield and the interior of the vehicle. It records video basically round the clock, but it has built-in AI that lets you know when certain things happen. So you get it AI surveillance and real-time alerts as long as you have uh, coverage via LTE, which you have to pay for on a monthly basis of roughly around $20 a month at this point in time. And it'll let you know whether or not it thinks that there is a bump that hit your car, whether or not there's someone in your car that is not supposed to be there, whether someone broke the glass, uh, it doesn't really tell you exactly what it is that it detects, but you do. I do get some of these detection notices. Now it gives you unlimited live view and video alerts, so that uh, you know when something does happen. Supposedly, it will record it. Now during the 60 days, I've had nothing happen to the car. So I have. I mean, in terms of actually someone actually breaking in. Now, how does it know whether or not it's you or a person coming in? Well, there's actually an app that you use to activate your Owl Cam, and it's basically just called the Owl Cam. And it's an app that allows you to see what's going on here. See, uh, and unfortunately, um, it detects me going out there as potential damage as well until it figures out that, uh, you know, it via Bluetooth, I, I presume that it's actually me and not some sort of damage. So we'll get notices like that. So you can see I, I've uh, taken this out on a trip and there would be various different things on here. Now, what I found that was really cool about this mostly on our trip is that it serves as a log of things that have happened. If you just say uh, the keyword, OK Presto, it will then upload the footage like before I think about 20, 30 seconds before uh, so before you say OK Presto and the period of time, it'll basically mark it in the timeline of the recording. And then after you say that, it makes a little sound and you can say whatever you want and it will actually voice tag that so that you can look it up later here in the app. Now, even though everything is recorded, it, this wasn't really designed for you to download the footage. Uh, not all the footage at once anyways. Basically, they're all in these things called clips. And you can adjust the length of the clips as you edit it, and you can share it, and you can download it on your phone. And uh, this is how you're going to be able to see the type of footage that you see uh, here on the screen that I'm going to show you. Now, the quality is decent. You know, it is full HD quality, and I think that the microphone is also pretty good. So if you want to use it to capture certain specific clips, the little moments of your trip, that's what I used it mostly for. Now it didn't, it may have helped prevent some break-ins because it has uh, you know, a whole surveillance mode and it has a flashing green light that really stands out at night. In fact, while we were camping, we have noticed that the light is so bright that it actually projects light onto our tent. So it's definitely very visible to someone who is coming in from the front not from so much from the back or from the side, but really if you are seeing the vehicle from the front side, you will see it. I don't know why they didn't bother to put anything else on the inside because uh, that way someone can see it if you're potentially trying to break in from the back. So we have a big SUV that we put in. Actually, it's a mid-size three row. And uh, I do believe that the footage really, because the camera is you know, in the front facing the rear, it's really gonna capture stuff that's happening right there at front driver's side. Driver's side and passenger side and maybe the first row, but not the third row or where you might keep potentially your valuable things in the back. So for that, you probably want to look into some other uh, coverage uh, to capture that footage from the back in case that would help for insurance or anything like that. Now, what they claim is that, uh, you know, because this doesn't have like an SD card thing and it's cloud connected, if someone breaks in, the unit will notify it and start uploading the clip over to the cloud so that even though if they do manage to steal the owl cam, 
uh, the footage will be uploaded and then you will get all that evidence as needed and then you can share as, as you want. Now again, I, I didn't actually have that happening. You can say that any of these number of clips that I have on here where it says potential damage or bump detected, uh, they could be potentially uh, situations where it did upload the clip and what it'll probably do is upload a lower resolution of the clip and keep a higher resolution to finish uploading later. Now, the reason why I'm returning the owl cam is uh, basically multifold. Okay, so here's where some of the things didn't go quite so right with the owl cam. All right, number one, the LTE is based on, uh, at this time, at this point, AT&T coverage. And over here, it's very hard here in Sunnyvale where we're at, we really don't have much coverage of that at all. So there's some, it's extremely spotty. So let's say someone were hypothetically, we're going to break into the car and steal something. Uh, if they take the whole owl cam before it can upload, which is very likely because of the poor spotty coverage we have here, I might only get an alert that something happened, but not actually anything that actually happened. So. I'll give you an example. See this right here on the, the screen? These are four different videos that actually never uploaded. It says it's uploading from the owl cam, but really this was back in July 20, July uh, 20, okay, in 2022. And today it is August 5th. These are probably never gonna upload. And I think that these will never upload because another, this brings up to the second thing that I've had is the stability of the owl cam. Now, surprisingly, in hot weather, it managed to keep running, and that's probably because it has a built-in fan, which you can audibly hear if you sit down there in a quiet. Now, normal driving, you're not going to notice it. It's not going to bother you too much. But if you're sitting in a quiet, you will definitely hear the fan, and that does seem to keep it cool. Unfortunately, there have been many times where I've been driving, and for whatever reason where I come back, I find that the owl cam has simply reboot itself. No idea why, no idea when, it's not even on a regular schedule, keep that in mind. Um, I have other cloud connected dash cams, uh, particularly one from, from Blackview where I can choose when it reboots to keep the system a little bit more stable. This just reboots on a fly and I really don't know why. And if it happens to be rebooting during the period of time when you needed it most, you're gonna lose that footage as shown here. See this stuff? It's probably never gonna upload. And I can't actually get into the system. I can't plug in a USB port and actually download the footage as far as I know. So I, I, I yeah, so it's not 100% reliable. So I wouldn't rely on this 100% for, uh, for your other things. But I have multiple dash cams. I have a lot in the car covering all different purposes. I have separate videos on that. You should check that out if you're interested in my multi-cam setup. Um, but I will say that this, give me, this did give me a bit more peace of mind as I was traveling around the Pacific Northwest. Right, noticing that when there is a suitable or a, a good amount of reception that I can at least get an alert from here. Now, my other dash cams also rely on uh, LTE coverage and it would just be specifically from my hotspot and primarily T-Mobile. So, you know, my T-Mobile coverage here is not great either. What would have really made the owl cam better is if they also supported Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi hotspot so that at least when I have it parked out there in front of the house and something happens, it could connect via Wi-Fi and upload and give me that information. But that's just not the case. All right. Another thing that I had issue with is that this really needs to connect with your OBD2 uh, port on your car. Now, it has a USB-C uh, cable interface that comes out, but uh, it actually doesn't work if you try to connect your own power supply. So I can't actually just run this off battery. I do have to run this through the car, which does present some issues if you are parking this long term. Let's say in an airport and you're gone for a week, chances are your battery is not gonna have enough to keep the owl cam going on. Luckily with the owl cam, once it detects something like that happens, uh, it, it shuts down the owl cam before uh, the power goes out, uh, before there's not enough power to start your car so that you won't be stranded, okay? So, you know, there, there's some really good things about the Owl Cam. It being fully integrated is one really positive benefit that I have not been able to uh, actually achieve with something else. Now, Blackview has one that they sell a modem where you can stick your own LTE card. I haven't tried that yet, but it's kind of, you know, a separate dongle that you plug in. This is an all-in-one unit. So it actually looks fairly clean uh, on the windshield, even though it's smack in the middle. It 
it didn't bother me or the passengers too much. And by it being in the middle, it actually captured some pretty good footage and in a better way than a lot of dash cams were, which were designed to be uh, put somewhere else that is sort of out of your periphery or out of the, the point of view that might uh, obstruct your vision. So overall, um, I think it's pretty good if you can get past the fact that it is $20 extra a month and uh, the fact that it, it, it won't necessarily be 100% reliable and also if you can get across with the whole AT&T uh, issue. So um, I'm going to give it a recommend for people who just want one simple solution and have AT&T coverage. Don't mind the $20 fee, but uh, for me, Having that combination of uh, issues together with the owl cam and also the unknown future of it makes me think that I need to look elsewhere. And so my owl cam is actually going back. I know there are some really uh, pissed off people that have purchased into the owl cam before and uh, they felt that, uh, you know, they didn't follow through their promises. Now, I didn't jump in on it when Alcam version 1.0 came out, and uh, you know, trying this with Alcam 5, it feels like it's it's a little bit more uh, refined, but still not perfect. And the future is uncertain for Alcam, in my opinion. So if you don't want to invest in, uh, I believe this is $350 uh, at the time in something like this for something that might not necessarily be around, then I would say. Uh, you know, skip it. One other thing that I did want to bring out, and this is probably something that a lot of people are going to be asking about too, is, well, can you use it as a dash cam without paying for the subscription? The answer is yes, but it's super duper limited and definitely not worth your while. Okay, so don't think about getting this at all if you're not going to pay for the $20 a month subscription because it is super duper limited in a way that it just you just might as well just buy like a $40 dash cam or $60 dash cam. And I, I have some relatively recent uh, uh, recommendations for that because they seem to work okay even if they're not cloud connected. And if you don't pay for the subscription, it's not cloud connected anyway. All right, so that's it for my two month long term, well, two month short term review with the Alcam Classic version. All right, that's it for this video. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, please put your comments down below. If you have one, what do you think? Thanks for watching. Catch you next video.